everyone and welcome to Bliss Music Academy. Today we're going to talk about how to sight read. Sight read. But first we have to know what is sight reading. Sight reading is when you're given a piece of music that you have never seen before and you're giving a limited of time to play it as smoothly and accurately and beautifully of course as possible. So that's what it is. Today we're going to use an example to look at the five steps of how to perfect your sight reading skills. Let's have a look. So we're going to look at this piece of music and then we're going to look at rule number one. First of all we're going to look at it in a chronological order. We're going to start with the uh, signatures, right? The uh, clefs, there's treble clef and there's bass clef, very standard, right? The second thing after that, what we can see is the signature, the key signature to be precise. The first one is a sharp. There's one sharp right there. And if we all know very well what the first sharp is, it is an F sharp and it represents it's in G major, which sounds like this. Right, so that's what we have to remember. So whenever we see an F sharp, we have to make sure that we are playing the correct key. So we really quickly, that's number one, we really quickly go through the whole piece of music to see whether we can identify any Fs, we'll have to remember that. So if we look at that, is there any on the right hand? There isn't any on the right hand, right? And then the left hand, normally this is a grade one piece. And normally if it tells you to, for example, put your hand there, it will tell you whether you are touching any Fs. You're not actually going to be um, facing any Fs on your right hand, so you're fine over here. So your left hand, it starts over here, right? So the D on your fifth finger, which is over here, and then Oh, there we go. That's actually the second note. Okay, second note. Um, the F sharp has appeared. So, in this case, right now, you would be able to know where your hand positions are. Okay. Second, and even if you don't know, that's fine because we're moving on. Second of all, the next thing after the times, uh, sorry, after the key signature is the time signature. It says three four. That means there's three beats in a bar. And I would like you to now think about how you're going to count it. Of course, you know you're going to count it one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But that leads us to step number three. Step number three is looking for the most complicated bar of the whole piece. So there are four bars here in this piece. And the third bar, in my opinion, is the hardest. Why so? Because there's the most notes as well as there's the most um, complicated times and rhythms that's written on it. As you can see, the first group, there's a line underneath linking the two notes together. These are quavers, that means they're half a beat each. And it appears again, there's another pair of quavers at the end of the bar. So looking at all of that, we don't really normally count one, two, three. I don't know what your teacher would teach you, but normally uh, in these cases, we're going to break down the one beat into half a beat and half a beat to count. And we count it as one and two and three and. And remember, when we're counting it, we have to have to count it all the way through exactly the same way. You can't count the first bar as one, two, three, and then one and two doesn't make sense because the timings are going to be different so we have to make sure that we are counting in a consistent way so if we have decided that okay in our heads we're going to count in one two three one two three go ahead and do that but in my opinion count it in one and two and three and okay so now what you do is now third step you have identified where the hardest bar is we are going to try playing it without making a sound so we know that the first note um, is an, an F sharp, so we count that one and two and three 
an and it's really easy to look up how to see it if you identified the first note which is an f sharp you can see that is on the line the next note it goes higher and it's fitted between the lines right those are what we call space notes and if you know that there's actually a pattern when you're looking at the scales on a, a piece of music and if it starts on a lined note it has to go the next one up to the space note and then line note again and space note again and lined note again so that's why we can tell that the first note is f the next one is just the next one up the next one is just the next one up and then as you can see it actually is going down again down and then down what's the next one after the next one is going up again to the g and then we round it up to that and make sure that you're all doing all of that very very quickly in your head or you know miming it or just practicing it without making a sound and number four which is what we have done already put your hands on the first notes uh, of what is provided and then check the tempo okay so what we can see is usually in these cases um, the treble clef we have to use our right hand to play the bass clef we have to use our left hand to play the first note has been given to you with a fingering so number three it says third finger putting on the B okay so B is here and again using the same way uh, left hand okay that's what where we are already so we know that that is a D and normally in these cases you don't have to move your hands too much and if you do have to move your hands the there will be new fingerings provided so if you see some really interesting fingerings at, in the middle of the piece you know oh that's the place where we need to move our hands right so um we have to look at the tempo right the tempo where does it say it says again at the beginning a lot of information usually is provided at the beginning of the piece telling you what to what to play how to play and how fast and how slow it says waltz here so uh, it doesn't really say how fast and how slow in this um, sense not like you know there's some other words like moderato uh, allegro or lento largo these kinds of indications so in this case i would suggest you going a bit slower than you normally would the first bar usually is very very easy so i wouldn't suggest you going too fast because if you rush at the beginning once you go to the end when it's really really busy uh, as we have established that the third bar is very very busy um, then you won't be able to keep up with the tempo so i would go really slowly so how would you be able to know how fast or how slow you're going to play look at the hardest bar again and then see how fast you can identify each of them for me i can do for example i can do this fast i can do one and two and three and remember this memorize this and then at the end number five okay uh, what you have to do is have to look at the dynamics what does it say it says p at the beginning piano we have to go softly and then where does it change normally there will be changes towards the end um, as in this case there's a crescendo uh, between the second and the third bar you have to go reach mf mezzo forte not too loud not too soft all right and then you have to go diminuendo and you have to wrap up the piece very gently very softly right now all of this um normally uh the the examiner will give you 30 seconds to prepare so the more we practice this method the better and um, that's why your teachers always ask you to practice as much as we can that's why even though um the online examinations it doesn't provide it to you it actually is a very very good way to help you develop a very good skill in um, reading your piece of music uh, for the first time and doing it accurately that's why it's very important for us to train ourselves right so imagine that we have done everything right and now we're going to play and in our heads we're going to play like this one and two and three and you can stop. And that's it. Thank you for watching.